In our last video, we went through and talked about how to make the magnet as well as a wooden block in Inventor for the Kelvin maglev train. In this video, we're going to talk about the propeller. And it's probably the most difficult part on here because it uses a bunch of tools that you don't really use all that much unless you're doing some specific things inside of Inventor. Uh, so I've already gone ahead and created my sketch in my front view. And I'm going to go ahead and try to make a, a revolution, a part for the middle of the cone of the propeller. And then we'll worry about the propeller blades in just a moment. Uh, so I'm going to go through here and I'm going to measure everything up and I'm using a ruler. So I'm actually going to be using centimeters because it's a little bit easier to read everything uh, on a small part like this. Uh, so when I read that, I get 1.5 cm and it will automatically convert it over to inches if you're here in the United States or one of the other two countries that uses the US imperial system. Uh, we're going to go out here and make something for the right hand side and it's going to be when I measure it, 1.4. The only problem is I have to half that. So I'm going to put in one point, or I'm going to put in 0.7, excuse me, centimeters, and then going up here, uh, I get a measurement of 0.8 centimeters. Uh, so I have the basic outline here, and then this area here is going to be where the cone goes. So this represents the total height. This is going to represent half of the total width, or half of the diameter, which is the radius of the piece. And then this is going to represent the outside height where the propeller blades are, and then this area here will be the cone. To do the cone, I'm going to use the arc tool. Uh, so I'm just going to click on arc. I'm going to go in here and click on the top and go over and click on the bottom. And then I can set this arc here. As long as you don't blow it out too far, uh, it will look fine pretty much no matter what you want to do. You just want to make sure it's positive arc, not kind of bending in. Uh, so I'm going to go through here and I think that looks good. You can put dimensions on there if you'd like, but I'm happy with that as is because everything else is locked in. So I'm going to finish my sketch and then I'm going to revolve it. Uh, so to revolve, all you need to do is have a profile, a closed loop. If this doesn't automatically highlight, you probably don't have a closed loop. Uh, then I need to select an axis of revolution, which is going to be the center line, the height, total height of the object. So go through that, select that, and boom, we are good to go. Uh, that part looks good. Now we need to talk about adding the blades on, which is kind of the more difficult piece of this, but it's pretty quick and pretty easy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a work plane that's going through the middle here because I can't work on anything that's not flat and nothing here is flat. Uh, so I need to go through and use a work plane. I could go up and use plane up here, but that's not really going to help here because I don't have a place to base it off of. So I'm going to go back to my origin here on the right hand side and I'm going to find a plane that goes to the middle. The YZ, the XZ doesn't work and the XY works. So I have two of them that works. I'm going to stick on the XY just to keep everything there. And then I'm going to go over and create a sketch. Uh, so I have my piece here. Everything's nice and good. If I want to see inside of it, because I'm actually halfway through this thing. Uh, if I want to see inside, it, I can hit the keyboard shortcut F7, or I can right click and go over to slice graphics. And that's going to cut inside the part so that I'm looking inside where my sketch is. Um, that's important because I want to draw a line here from the origin up and outside of the part. It doesn't really matter how big that line is as long as it's visible from outside of the part. Once we do that, we're going to go in and in this right hand area here, we're going to put on the beginning parts of the propeller blade. Uh, we want to make sure this starts on the outside corner of our object. So use your snaps to help you do that. I'm going to click once. I'm going to go over and I measure at, at 3.5 centimeters. And then when I go through and go down here, uh, that tells me that I measured one millimeter. So I'm typing one mm and I'll hit enter and I'll finish my sketch. At this point, I have everything ready. Uh, this line and this entire closed loop needs to be outside of this part. And my line going up needs to be inside of the part. Once I have that done, I'm going to click on coil. Uh, and if you're using an older version of Inventor or a different view of Inventor, you may have to hit the sweep drop down just like you could on box here. It's just drop down. Uh, if you click on that, you're going to get coil. Coil should automatically select your closed loop and then it's asking for an axis. I'm just going to click on this vertical line here and you see how it spins up. If it's spinning down, just hit this red and uh, black button and you'll change the direction of everything. Now what I want to do is I want to change the coil size. So I'm going to go to the coil size tab and it's going to ask me to change the pitch and the revolution. The revolution, it's, see it's going all the way around one time and the pitch means in that entire area it's going to go up one inch. Uh, we're not going to have that do that. The revolution's not going to go around the whole thing. It's going to go up just a little piece. I'm going to say, type in like one tenth of an inch. I don't really want it going up very much. And when I go into the front here 
and take a look. I want this line to eventually kind of go even with this line. So if I imagine there's a line coming out of here, this yellow line should eventually impact that. So I'm gonna keep playing with the pitch to see where it's at. Now three looks a little high, so I'm gonna go two, 2.5, 2.75 maybe. I'm, I'm okay with that, so I'll hit okay at this point, and I have that there. Uh, that looks great, I'm happy with that. You can see that it's pretty close to that point, which I'm pretty happy with. Uh, and then what I need to do is I need to go into my fillet tool, and I'm gonna round off these edges here to really complete the look of what it is. Now this isn't really gonna be a functional one if you want like 3D print or something, it's not really functional, uh, but it does look pretty close to the part that you have. So I have that ready to go, and now I need to repeat that three times. I could go through and actually draw them in there, but that sounds like a lot of work, and I don't really wanna do a lot of work if I don't have to. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the circular pattern tool. When I click on that, I get a couple of options. It's gonna ask me the features, and I can select the pieces over here, or I can use my browser. I like using the browser personally, because I can select exactly and not misclick. Uh, so I'm gonna get coil one and fillet one, and then the rotational axis is gonna go around the center piece there. It's gonna set up six of them to begin with, and our propeller only has three blades, so I'll hit three, and I'll hit okay, and now I have a propeller blade ready to go. The only other thing I need to do is put a circle for the hole of it in the middle. And I'm gonna put that in there. I believe it's one eighth of an inch, and I'll finish my sketch, and I'm gonna cut that back, say three eighths of an inch. So it comes close to the outside of the part, but not really. And I have that there. And the propeller that I have in front of me actually happens to be red. So I'm gonna find a color here when I do the drop down, and I'll find red for what I wanna do. Uh, it's a, a light red. Sure, that looks great. Uh, so I'm happy with that. I have my propeller. I'm gonna save it. And in our next video, we're gonna talk about the assembly.